Right, welcome back um, to the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. We're gonna not take so much time to do the intro. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, click the button. So we're continuing this game now. We just had the saloon. Knuckles beating up the Super Monkey Ball Arcade. This fucking guy who licked all the salt of these nuts. Um, and I don't trust this arm. I don't know why. I just don't. Anyway, um, we're gonna go ahead and go to the uh, to the next car. <laughs> no way, dang nabbit. All right, you got it, partner. Onwards. Let's see what this is in store for us. Ooh, this is nice. Yo. They have Chow Motivational Posters. Awesome. All this stuff's getting heavy. I'll dump what I don't need. Everyone's favorite journalist reporter, Amy Rose, is hot on the scoop. SPO's here, of course. I'm heading out. You've been fabulously helpful. Already? Before you go, SPO and I wanted to give you your presents. My presents? You're both too sweet. Thank you. Hmm. Vector, it seems we have more guests. Amy, there you are. Join us. No. Flattered. At the pace you two are going, Sonic's murderer will never get found. Oh, she's confident. She must have something up her sleeve. This tip is just too juicy to ignore. I'll see you all around. Don't worry, Sonic. I'll be the one to avenge you. And quick! But how are you gonna leave? The door to the next car is locked. Oh, you doubt the birthday girl? The birthday girl has a master key, of course, yes. The uh, conductor gave that to her to start. Right, right. The birthday girl gets the birthday key. Of course, it's a birthday privilege. I'll solve this case before anyone else. Bye! <laughs> Amy may be hasty, but she's thorough. Now, what are you two do? Looking mighty suspicious, I say. <laughs> I'm the detective, so I can't be the murderer. That's what the murderer would say, Tails. I don't trust you. And I'm, uh... Here to ask if anyone's hungry. Starved. I'd kill for a chicken parmesan right now. Maybe kill isn't the right language to use right now? I'm Vector, the butcher. I'm licensed to handle raw meat. And I'm Espio, the poet. Ah, poetry. A resonant message from poet to reader, meant to challenge our delicate perspectives with the most rhythmic of prose. Can I hear some? Sure. Uh... Yo, what? Egg. <laughs> nice. So cute. Teardrops in the spring. Can you hear me sing? La 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 la, dee 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 dee. Is that it? <laughs> I have more, if you like. Cherry blossoms in the spring. I'm uh, satisfied for now, thanks. At least he's rhyming, I suppose. Cap and I are here to establish both of your alibis. Can you walk us through what happened after Amy had everyone leave the dining car? Oh sure, it's simple. We just explained this to Amy, actually. And we were all sent off, Rouge, Blaze, Shadow, so and Sonic all passed through this library bar. Huh? So they must have all been- yeah, okay. Where Amy told me and Espio to stay. I promptly picked a book off the shelf and made myself comfortable. Vector got bored, so he left to see what Knuckles was up to in the saloon car. Right, so Espio was at this point alone. Everyone already passed through, right? Yep. 
Where was Rouge? I happened to see her lipstick stain on a cup at the saloon car. Rouge came over to the library car, seemingly looking for something. Then she went to search the saloon car. What was she looking for? She came back shortly after. We heard her shout, No way! at the brochure stand over there. But she left back to the casino car before Shadow came through and locked the door. I wonder what she found. She's obviously been on the hunt for something. Yeah, so she did found she did found it. I can English. She did find it. Thank you. Jeez. <laughs> um Right. After Rouge left, Shadow walked through the casino car. So Shadow's been going around locking doors for everyone but Amy, of course. Amy can just go through uh, everywhere all the time. Um, that's kind of suspicious. Then enter the library car and lock the door behind him. More importantly, why has Shadow been locking doors? Shadow walked through the library car to the saloon car, where Knuckles and I were playing games. He insisted on showing us up, showing us up at Super Monkey Ball. I got so engrossed by the rolling monkey action, I hardly noticed when Shadow left the saloon car. I guess he walked through the library car to the casino car, again locking the door behind him. Jeez. I thought he was a barista. He's a barista. He's not. He's a locksmith that is also a barista. That's what I'm going with. Final answer. Then return to the lounge car, where he was meant to be stationed. When Vector came back, we realized Knuckles locked the door to the saloon car. We were stuck in the library car. That's when the train sped up. We were worried about the bookshelves falling on us, but we got through it alright. We sat trapped here until Amy arrived asking questions. She's the one that told us someone murdered Sonic. So they didn't know, but that's just what they say, right? According to this story, only Vector left the library car at one point to play video games, which is backed up by Knuckles. Espio was alone for a period. I don't recall if Shadow had locked the door to the, um, to the casino. Um, if he didn't, it could be that Espio left the room as well at some point. We just don't know for sure. Of course, that um, assumes that Vector and Knuckles aren't lying about uh, Espio not being in the uh, saloon car. And yeah, that's all that happened. Oh. Hmm. With all these locked doors, it seems Vector and Espio, Vector or Espio, couldn't have left the library car or the saloon car. Yeah, they they were like between the two, alternating between the two. Well, Vector was. SPO was uh, reading a book, I guess. Thank you both for your cooperation. We're just gonna peek around and we'll return with any questions. If you return with any meat, I'll chop it up for you. What? And if you'd like to be serenaded with a poem, I got you covered too. SPO, please. I would love to be serenaded with a poem. Thanks, guys. Their alibi seems solid enough, but we still s we should still search for clues. What we're looking for is any evidence that proves what they're saying is true. We need to confirm Vector's reason for leaving his post, and determine if Espio was actually in the library car for reading. A tall task, but we can do it. Let's get to the bottom of this, Stills. Absolutely. Arm. Oh, poor thing. That arm is really struggling cleaning up this car. To be fair, I wouldn't want to clean up all this mess either. Let's just leave it alone and to do its thing. Yeah, probably for the best. Dude, I want to talk to the arm. These are the brochures. There's some fallen books. Trash can! Something's always hidden in the trash. I hate to say it, but there's nothing here. Ah, I really thought there'd be something here. Yep. Are you sad? There was nothing in the trash bin? 
no, uh, I'm alright. <laughs> I'm sure, uh, I'm sure there'll be something hidden in the next trash bin we find. You really think so? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we just gotta stay optimistic. Yeah. Yeah, okay. These trash bins hide a secret, I'm sure of it. Gap, you're pretty unconventional, but I like that. Thanks, dude. Was that supposed to be a compliment? Yes. A globe of our marvelous planet. I haven't traveled around much. The islands are fun and all, but I'd love to visit some countries. They're a lot of fun, honestly. Plenty of wonderful people and shops. The food can't be beat, either. Ah, sounds perfect for a vacation. The conductor was talking about Spagonia. If you've ever been there. I have, actually. If you're ever visiting, be sure to stop at the university and say hi to Professor Pickle. He'll tell you everything about the area and makes one scrumptious sandwich. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks. This group knows everyone has been everywhere, haven't they? Yep. The motivational poster. A chow hangs precariously from a tree branch. Large text below hang reads, hang in there. Wow, I really needed to see this. <laughs> Yeah, those things are fucking everywhere. Like, who decides that they should, like, put those things everywhere in, like, workspace and school and stuff like that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. This little chow's hanging in there, refusing to use his wings to fly to safety. Idiot. Because choosing the hard way is often the most rewarding. No, he's just an idiot. That's beautiful. If this chow can stick to his principles and find strength, then I can too. There's no way there was that much thought put into this poster. Right? <laughs> fucking... Hey! It's the fucking, uh... <laughs> it's the avatar from... From, uh, Sonic Forces. Oh my god, look at him. <laughs> yeah, they said that the reference was gonna be in there. I didn't miss it. Books. So many books on the ground. I wish we had time to pick them all up, dude, there's an arm to do that for you, so... I sadly have no interest in picking up these books. Dude, you work here, come on. A lot of these were knocked out by the train speeding up. But Rouge pulled a lot of these out, too, searching for something. What reckless behavior. I feel sorry for the poor books. Spines are creasing, they're opening too far. This kid feels empathy for everything. Yeah, dude. Don't disrespect the books, bitch. Chaos Cola. Check out our book club. Book of the Month. Gone Gal. Whoa! I wish you could stop and look at all these books. Well, you can. But Sonic needs me. No time to rest. Nah, he's fine. He's dead. Go ahead and look at these books. Alright, let's move on then. Well, I mean a little peek wouldn't hurt. He's scavenging through all the book titles excitedly. He's like a kid in a candy shop, or in this case, a genius in a trained library. That's odd. I know some books have fallen on, on the floor and everything, but... Every book on the shelves is in alphabetical order but this one. It's the user guide to the Mirage Express, the train that we're currently on. Hey yo, did someone else, like, speed up the train using the Mirage Express guide? Do you think someone found it on the ground and put it back? Maybe, but it is interesting. Let's make a note of this. Mirage Express manual. What's this bright red book? Oh, yuck. This tricks of the evil scientist, Dr. Eggman. Dude, it's just something red. Yep, this is Dr. Eggman's autobiography and recipe book. Wow, that's an interesting combination. What kind of recipes? Who cares? I wouldn't trust any book he's written. It's weird this is even here. Maybe people just appreciate an omelette. You may not be wrong. 
Of course, there's fucking recipes for omelets. In the Eggman biography. God damn it. Truly a Baldy McNose hair moment. Look at the brochures. Oh, brochure! <laughs> there are travel destinations ideas here, like amusement parks, caverns, hotels, restaurants. Oh! Cap, look at this. There's a couple maps here. Hey, a new sprite. This seems to be a map of the library car. The books are categorized by genre, which are listed here. I love a good overhead map. Let's take it. We should take this brochure about Cave 2. Look, there's stalactites. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's funny because it sounds like stalactites. Haha. <laughs> nah, leave it. Oh, haha, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Nobody shares my funness for caves. God, I love caves. Caves are cool, alright? An exhaustive manual of the Mirage Express many features and capabilities. Doesn't seem to mention how to drive the train, which... Okay, okay. That leaves... Wait. Maybe that is a hint, because... If someone would try to speed up and didn't know how to drive the train... You know, maybe they'd try to use a manual, but... The information wasn't in there. The thing is, it could have only been Shadow, I guess, maybe? Because he's the one who can freely move around, and Amy couldn't have been in the um, conductor's car. Shadow was close to the conductor's car, he was stationed close to the conductor's car. Where Sonic was? Ooh. Shadow's looking really, really, really... Um, suspicious right now. Yeah. And nobody was playing Super Monkey Ball. That's... I don't know. The time is a little weird. Library map. No red map. Yeah, library. Shelves and tables included. Ah, cool. Really interesting here. That's the brochures. That's that carpet. Yeah. SPO. Serenade me. Yes. Uh, well, we're on a train. Locomotive in motion. I think I lost my lotion. The window shows the ocean. Oh, wait. There's some ocean. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Great. I actually really like that one. Huh? Uh, talk. What will it be? Space! I've made it up to space with my beloved's antique vase. But a mistake in my haste dropped the vase from my embrace. It's my antique. I must now replace. Wow, a lotion and vase, huh? What caused you to drop the vase? Don't read it deeply. It's just a poem. Dude. That's, you're meant to read deeply into... Okay, well. He has thought it through, has he? Order. I have a poem about this. My starved stomach babbled. Though I ignore the grumbling tummy. For the eggs I received are scrambled. When I asked for my eggs. Sunny. Oh, wow. Um, we don't serve any eggs on the train, though. Maybe you read the recipe book. My talent is wasted on you, lot. <laughs> God. Yeah, talent, exactly. Did you bring me any meat to chop? I may be a butcher, but they confiscated my meat cleaver before getting on the train. Jeez, you brought that thing? Fuck. You actually tried to bring it? Yeah, that's what I was saying. I'm a man of authenticity, Tails. Without a knife, I'm just a chef in a ketchup-stained apron. Not a butcher. I think if you had a knife on you, we'd definitely think you were the murderer. Yeah, but there were no knife wounds on Sonic, so... Hmm. But what if I hit... You know, I'm not the biggest fan of this line of thought. Oh, that's the same thing. Ah. Uh... Order. Oh yes, please, I'm starved. Actually, I'm off duty at the moment. 
The murder, murder mystery is more important, dude. Who said you were off duty? And then why would you show the menu to me? Come on, cat. Why would you tease him like that? And here I thought I could trust you. You've made a fool of me. Look, Cap, you've made him a fool. You he already was Spectre. Come on, man. Come on, Cap, smooth this over. No, I'm the... Yeah. Yeah. I smoothed things over, but I woke up. Oh, that's fucking terrible. Shadow supposedly walked to the library car before, before going into the saloon car. When Shadow left the library car, he locked his door on the way out. There's gotta be a reason he's doing this. Should we make a note of it? Yeah, I do believe we should. And we have Shadow's lock added to my inventory. I think we've found enough clues. Let's go interrogate Vector and Espio to find out what really happened. Uh, let's start with Espio. Fancy poem. Hey -oh! oh wait, there's they're looping together. Okay. So, the two of you don't believe us, eh? It's not that I don't trust either of you, but I wouldn't be a proper detective without examining the validity of your alibis. Cap and I are here to confirm two things: why Vector left to play games with Knuckles. And if Espio really was reading in the library car. Yeah, we don't know. Uh, for sure, so that's fair. Vector, we'll start with you. Why did you leave the library car to visit Knuckles? We're prepared to present evidence if need. Oh, that's easy. I got bored. <laughs> yeah? What? I wasn't entertaining him enough, it seems. Vector enjoys being social. Plus... We were instructed to mingle. I remembered the arcade machine in the saloon car, so figured I'd go check it out. This seems to line up with the information we gathered. No. And then that brings our attention to you, Espio. Rouge entered the library car, found something, and then left. What did she find? You said you immediately started reading, but were you actually reading the entire time you were in the library car? Of course he was. Once Espio starts reading, he doesn't stop though it's done. I've seen it happen. It must have been a good read. What was the book? Eggman's book. 100%. Or the manual of the train, maybe, because it's placed in the wrong... Uh, it's placed in the wrong spot. Espio doesn't owe you that, detective. Let the man live. What if it was embarrassing? What kind of things do you... Um, Espio. <laughs> what kind of things do you think I read? If you want to talk, I have a hunch on what book it might be. Cat, would you help me out? The lock. The uh, express manual. A manual? You think Espio was reading instructions? What argument could you possibly have to support this? Oh shit, we gotta play. I forgot. Ow! God damn it. I suck, oh no. So, I'm not gonna risk it. Cool. Gaming! Hell yeah. There are books scattered around the floor for sure, but the remaining books on the shelves were all in alphabetical order. All except this manual, meaning someone, at the very least, picked up the manual and put it back in the incorrect place. <laughs> Man, it, the art never misses. This lack of attention to detail isn't normally like you, Espio. Hey now! You're an all-star, put your game on, go, play! <laughs> I wouldn't have you insulting my pal like this. Calm down, Vector. I know you mean well, but I can handle myself. Apologies, Espio. 
a butcher and a poet. Friendship can form anywhere. You have no idea. That is indeed the book I was reading. The Mirage Express Manual. Trains are cool. I agree. In our case, we'd like to ask you a few questions about the manual. Cap, if you don't mind. <laughs> Could you ask Espio some questions about the manual? Just flip to a page and ask away. Oh, I see. Quiz Espio uh, about the manual to prove you read it. Which page should I quiz him on? Do it. Um, he doesn't stop until he's it's all the way done, and it was already back, so... Okay, um... What efficient and extremely accurate technology was installed to assist in keeping the train spotless? Robotic arms. During events, they can perform a variety of tasks and are responsible for cleaning up trash and messes afterwards. I remember the conductor saying that the train can clean itself. Though, I have a feeling the train company just didn't want to hire any janitors. The robotic arms can also detect weapons or explosives being brought to the train, ensuring passenger safety. So I guess the Pico Pico hammer is not considered to be, like, a weapon? Seems like SPO is that question. Cap, hit him with another one. Oh, okay, which space do I choose? Uh, all the way here. What is the Mirage Express's cancellation policy? No refunds and you will be charged a no-show fee. This does not apply if you're over the age of 65. Gee, the person who made this rule must have been over 65. <laughs> nice. Last one, Cap. Let's see if Esco can get 3 for 3. Gotcha. Which page should I pick last? I don't have a choice. Oh, what? Wait a second. was implemented to support the conductor duties and ease general train obligations. An intelligent data processing system. It works in tandem with the conductor to assume, to assure smooth travel for guests. I remember this. The train has an autopilot, but it can't access its full suite capabilities without the conductor present. Now, did I pass your little test? Yes. Totally. It's while you were able to retain all this information so quickly. A poet's <laughs> it's often surprising, of course. I don't know if I'd be bragging about that, yeah. Surprising? What does, what does that mean? You've clearly read the manual. Those answers feel far too specific to be guesses. And you both had the nerve to question my buddy like that. Don't we want to be supporting folks who read? You have to admit though, reading the entire time a murder occurred does sound a bit suspicious, even if true. But he answered all my questions so calmly. This is very impressive. No, no. I understand everyone's cautious attitudes. Vector was the only uh, one to see me reading after all. My al alibi is hard to substantiate despite being the truth. Duh. Well, you definitely read through the manual, so I suppose we could... Espio, is that true? Vector... No, because Rouge. Of course! Yes, that's correct. Problem. Frankly, I don't believe that can be true. And we have evidence to back it up. Cap, yeah, the, um... The, uh... This one. Because Rouge must have seen him. Sit, sit there. What? What? I guess Shadow too. But Rouge was like going through the brochures and they're here, right? Well, whatever. Shadows mock. Please, pray tell. What this has to do with anything? Rob, Cap. Let's get our argument together. Oh my god, oh my god. We gotta do gaming! <laughs> oh, I should have jumped. Jeez. Well. Ah, god damn it. Jeez. <laughs> well, I made it. I can play video games, shut up. <laughs> Should 
should have worked with the library card to get to the saloon car, where he set the original high score on the arcade machine. Yeah, but I ended up beating it. It wasn't the high score long. Crocs are natural gamers. Like... The shoes? SPS City saw Shadow enter the library car, but he's mentioned nothing about Shadow's return. He only mentions that Vector came back. When Shadow left Knuckles and Vector in the saloon car, Espio was fully seated reading his book for a good while at this point. <clears throat> we know Shadow had to walk back through the library car when he left the saloon car. So there's absolutely no way Shadow and Espio didn't notice one, one another on Shadow's return trip. Ah, uh, I mean, it was a simple slip up. I was just fully immersed in my book and I didn't notice Shadow. You're telling me this sound of doors opening and locking wouldn't cost you to look up? Uh, well, I... You see... I can sense Espio's des desperation here. Defending the argument that he was reading the entire time isn't easy. So, if you didn't see Shadow returning from the saloon car to lock all the doors, then at that moment, were you really in the library car at all? But how would Espio leave? Shadow locked all the doors, and no one saw Espio in the saloon car. It's a mystery, my dear Cap, and that I would love for Espio to solve. You gotta believe me. That cool demeanor is vanishing. I was so involved with my book, I didn't notice Shadow pass back through the library car. Honest. When Vector returned, he even had to tap me on the shoulder to get my attention. Yeah, I think I remember doing that. I must avenge my friend's death, so I ask you again, Espio. If you weren't there for Shadow to see your reading, then how did you leave the library car? I wasn't. I, I didn't. It doesn't just seem right to me. Tails definitely feels like he's onto something, but I don't see it. Is Espio simply sitting reading, or did he somehow vanish to not notice Shadow's return to the library car? What should I do? Tails. No, I can't interrupt Tails while he's on the sun. Cap, my favorite and beloved employee, please. Take the passengers aboard this train, they must take care of. If you fail, not such a torturous stuff, not such an old people soul to get sued. <laughs> Alright. I have to make sure our guests are taken care of. I have to speak up. Tails! We have a piece of evidence that can answer all of our problems. Oh, of course. We haven't used this yet. I mean, maybe he was sitting here. Could be. This one. Alright. Let's get my thoughts in order. Whoa! Please. See? See the exits? They're right across from one another, a straight path. If Shadow walked down the straight path, there's a way Espio and Shadow couldn't have seen one another. Looks like you'll have to point out exactly where on the map uh, you mean. Where could Espio have been for Shadow to not see him? There. Interesting. That's where I was sitting reading my book. I can second this. When I returned from the saloon car, Espio was in the same spot. And that confirms it then. You see, Shadow and Espio couldn't have seen each one another from this spot. Because a bookcase is in the way. I was kind of just assuming Espio took the big chair, but I guess not. Nah. There's no way Shadow could have seen Espio, or vice versa. It makes a lot of sense why you never mentioned Shadow's return, Espio. There's just no way you would have seen him. I apologize for losing my cool back there. I felt like I was grasping despite telling the truth. I have that sometimes. 
I feel you, Esker. But I'm glad you all believe me now. Your alibi isn't the most airtight, but I have no further points. Thank you both for answering all our questions. We did it! Another pair of alibis validated. Meme approved. Too many locked doors to worry about, but I'm glad everything straightened itself out in the end. Well, I'm exhausted. I'm gonna crash here for a bit. These chairs are so comfy. Likewise, I could use a breather. Sadly, our work isn't done. I have plenty of questions for Rouge, and especially Shadow. Oh, it seems the door to the next car is open. Yeah, Amy opened it. Amy must have kept it open when she passed through earlier. And that's our cue to leave. See you later, Vector and SPL. Give him heck. And if you need any meat... Dude! <laughs> the guy just insists on chopping up meat. He doesn't even have his cleaver with him. What's he gonna chop it up with? His fucking hands? <laughs> God. I'll keep my poetry sharp for you both. Thank you, SPO. Honestly, your poetry is like top tier in my book. Oh, we're getting another one! Hell yeah! A murderer is on the loose, while doors keep getting locked. Tick tock. Tick tock. Tick tick. Tick tick tock goes the clock. While our heroes are on the kaboots. You know what, that one was bad. At this point, I'm feeling pretty confident in our detective abilities. We're really doing this. Come on, Cap. Let's see what's next. Coming. Right. Awesome. Well, I have stuff to attend to. Um, once again, such a fun, uh, such a fun chapter. Ooh, we didn't see this. These chairs are very comfy. So, so plush. Puts me right into the mood to read. Makes one to take a nap, personally. In fact, maybe I'll rest my eyes a bit. Cap, no, don't fall asleep. There's been a murder, remember? <laughs> if I had a ring for every time a murder ruined my nap time, I, had, I would have had one ring. Very cool. Well, um, I'm gonna go, I'm, oh jeez, I can't talk. Man, I'm a little tired today. I don't know if you can notice, but... Nevertheless, I have uh, stuff to do, so I'm gonna go. go, go geez, I can talk, man. Right, this time, this time is gonna work. I'm gonna go ahead and put a cut in here. Man, why was it so hard to say? I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a cut in here. Remember to uh, hang in there, like this Chow. Chow fucking idiot who could just fly. Um. Yeah, I have nothing else to say. I hope I see you in the next one. Where we go ahead and explore the... Uh, the, uh... Not the arcade. Pokemon. Pokemon, you know what it's called? It's like where you gamble. Oh my, I forgot the English word. Oh no. The... Casino! Yes. Gonna go ahead into the casino, ask Rouge some questions, because she's been doing stuff. And we're gonna see Blaze with her very, very awesome, cool outfit. Very, very cool. Well, look forward to that. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording now. Uh, once again, hang in there. And... Thanks for watching. Save. There we go.